Welcome sentient beings from all known universes and beyond. It's time to activate your cranial downlinks and prepare to receive a raft of discussion on a cosmic ocean of science fiction and fantasy topics, interviews with local area genre devotees, and insightful prognostication by our soothsayers of science fiction, our forecasters of fantasy, and any other beings that happen to get caught in our gravity well. This is the Galactic Driftwood Podcast. Oh, and welcome to another episode of the Galactic Driftwood Podcast. I'm Bill. I'm John. I'm Seth. I'm Charles. Linda. And we've got some interesting stuff to talk about. Uh, there's uh, been some excitement in the news with relation to uh, GameStop and a lot of stock trading that has uh, a lot of uh, nerds on Reddit uh, having a good time screwing the big guy. Um, what do you know about that, Seth? You look like you look like you'd be out there buying game stock, GameStop stock. Oh, sadly, I think I got it. Uh, I uh, found out about it too late, and I don't. I myself do not really play the stock market. We've got our retirement investments, and that's fine for me. Yeah. Got How about you, I Charles? <laughs> yeah, I wish I'd been in on it earlier. Yeah, this is kind of one of those things I wish I'd been in on. Well, are you guys put, in on uh, who would have bought GameStop stock uh, right. even even a month and a half ago? It's right. like it was GameStop is circling the drain. It's about to yeah. well, just fall away and become an online company. It's that's like, kind of part of the problem is that uh, so the whole scheme revolves around short short selling stock, which is one way that hedge funds make their money. They kind of pick a loser, someone who they think, it, uh, companies who they think are going down, like uh, GameStop, AMC, a couple others, uh, mo most recently played into the story, GameStop isn't the only one, uh, but they will basically predict uh, or pick someone who's going down a, a loser or, uh, and then they will borrow stock something i didn't know you could do and maybe it's just the thing that hedge funds are able to do because you know, what what rules do you have when you make billions of dollars anyway so you borrow stock <laughs> yeah, you betting settle. on the price to fall and then you sell the stock at that lower price at that then you sell the stock and then you rebuy no, it at the lower price. Yeah, that's right. To return to the company. And then you pocket the change. And that's short selling. So. And in this the, case, people <laughs> bid up the stock. Yes. Instead of it falling dramatically, yeah. it went up dramatically, which meant that they had to buy the stock back at the much inflated price. And that, yeah. And they only have so long before they have to buy it back so the whole wall the reddit uh the subreddit where this all started off is called wall street bets don't recommend you go there it's apparently it's it's apparently one of the bad places on the internet that's doing something kind of good hmm. like I don't know. I haven't been personally, so I'm. It's, this is are, either way. Uh, are any of you guys on Reddit? Occasionally, not. I don't oh, really God. follow any subreddits. Uh, but uh, so this forum sees that, uh, or the subreddit sees that uh, certain companies are, or these hedge funds are betting against and short selling GameStop, AMC, and whatnot. And they kind of have a chance to both stick it to them and make some money. So they get everyone on their subreddit to buy the stock at this really low price, which then drives it way the hell up. It's gone from a couple, or GameStop went from being a couple dollars to being hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Forcing so the these hedge. Hmm? Uh, so the question is, if you're one of the guys that helped drive up the price of the stock and you bought it when it was, 
you know, let's say you bought it when it was $10 and now it's up to hundreds of dollars. Um, this is assuming that, you know, people are going to have to hold on to that stock for a little while um, so that the price will stay up for those hedge funds to get really screwed, right? Because they've got a limited time window um, to make their money. Right. So are they... I'm assuming they don't know what that time window is necessarily. And you don't want to be the last person jumping out of that stock. So at what point does this whole thing just, you know, collapse in on itself from the weight of people jumping out before it's too late? Well, I mean, that's from what I, uh, something is what I kind of understand is that's how the housing market collapsed kind of. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And you had your head funds who made yeah. billions and then a, a bubble else collapsed. Who lost everything. Right. The housing bubble collapsed. And that's what that's the thing that bothers me about this is are we gonna lose GameStop because of this? I mean is this gonna destroy it? Yeah, you, you were anyway. Yeah, GameStop wasn't looking too good anyway, which is why it was being that's why, why they were short selling. Yeah. yeah, so Robin Hood is the the application that um average Joe's like you guys and I can use to get into the stock market on a, you know, very small basis. Right. Well, uh, and they take they've a little always, bit of money and buy your, buy your they, stock. They've prided themselves on being for the, for the common man, but then they froze out the stock. Right. Well, we're actually winning. But. So from what I understand is they needed yeah, like the way that Robin hood operates, they, needed money to well, they had to front a lot of the money trades. to get this to get this stock right and so when all of this started happening and people were buying up the stock like mad uh they needed to get like a an emergency one billion dollar cash infusion yeah. well, in order to just, stay in business it's not just fronting the stock i think it's it's um they have to be able to front the difference most brokers are really nervous about short selling yeah. To try that. Your broker will tell you not to do it. Yeah. So they had to have money to cover their, their operations. Yeah. Well, it yeah. was, it's the hedge funds who are trying, who are doing the short selling. Uh, Robin hood is what people were using to basically artificially infl inflate the price of this stock to screw the short sellers. Well, um, but you're assuming, yeah, I, I still think they have to be able to cover like some of these accounts is loan amounts when it went. I, I, don't, I don't know if they were able to force the sell. I, I don't I don't know how that went. If down. it stays up long enough, that, uh, from what I understand, they eventually have to return those stocks they bought. Yeah. Well, I, and several hedge, fund, hedge funds have already lost billions. Oh yeah, no, I'm seeing here one of them. One of them's gone down fifty three percent. They lost of their value. Wow. <laughs> so Bill, you're right. Not Jeez. making any noise when you're talking. Uh, but uh, as far as Robinhood goes, okay. they like as soon as they got that cash infusion, they started allowing trades on uh, on uh, those companies again. And from so, what so I that's see, why they stopped you, it. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's yeah, why they stopped I've it. I've got it. New York Times yeah. says Robinhood had to raise one billion from investors to help it cover cash demands during the week's trading frenzy, while traders and lawmakers sharply criticized the online broker for halting some trading in Reddit stocks. So in short, the consequences of the mania in GameStop, uh, AMC, and other stocks um, caused uh, Robinhood's um, operating case to become very serious. So. That's why they had to freeze everything while they waited for that one billion dollar investor cash infusion. infusion. Sure, that's the part oh. we don't hear. Although about. now <laughs> they're they're fine, but now I understand in the news today that they've limited so that people can only buy one share of that stock at a time now. Oh. Well, and, well and, I mean it's three hundred. It's hundreds of dollars now, so I don't sure. know how many people like. It, well, you buy that three hundred dollars stock, and like next week, there's a very good chance it's going to be worth like ten. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and that's yeah. why that's why Wall Street bets isn't necessarily the good guy because they are the one first ones who are going to be like, okay, and now we sell. Right. right. Bail. 
And like the people who got in at the very beginning are going to make a lot of money. Yes. Right. The people who are trying to get in now will get not. Exposed. Yeah. Like if you may, maybe if you like got in and you were like, okay, I get in, I wait for it to go up a few dollars and then I sell. Well, that doesn't really work really well at one share. Right. right. This is a key moment for our time traveling uh, fans. It's like if you can time travel, go back a year when GameStop, uh, GameStop shops, GameStop stock was four dollars. That's kind yeah. of a tongue twister. And have you noticed? Buy, buy a bunch of that and then sell uh, like about three days ago. No, it's <laughs> still way up, and it might still be climbing because they're still pushing the meme of it residual but i mean it's it, it's fun to watch because the hedge funds that have screwed over normal people so often are getting themselves screwed over and yeah, it's nice to see the 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 big guy get a, a a bruise um but at what cost it's like what's this gonna do at the cost of my 401k yeah it is gonna <laughs> hurt a lot of other people too just because mm -hmm. What kind of ramifications will this have for the stock market in general? Is it will it will it affect a lot of stocks or just these two? I mean, it's worked once, there. so legally, I don't know if there's anything stopping them from doing it again. I, on can, CNN, they said the only thing that that legally can be done is if this is being done by registered brokers. But I, if I, it's just people, then they can't stop them. I disagree with the idea that it's like hurting regular people, though. Well, if it's hurting your investments, like four hundred one k, well, rely on these. You for investing with the bad guys in the first place, I guess. Now, a lot of us don't know. Like you do, I was going to say, you don't know. No, no, right, but I, I, that's just I've. I've I don't do it right now because it, it um, yeah, I, I get bored easy. But um, you know when you trade stocks, I've had I've had the the big guys leverage do this to stocks that I thought would be a good buy or a bad buy, and they do the opposite, and then you find out a hedge fund has manipulated them. Hmm. That's why I don't. Partly why I don't do it anymore. I just do the four hundred one k stuff. I think it's a good thing. So would it be smart to get on Reddit on that uh, Wall Street Bets subreddit and uh, then just watch for the next it's what I'm opportunity doing. for this to happen and then get jump in quick and and don't wait for it to hit the news. You got to hit it before it gets publicly in the well, news. I imagine they're well, going to start slapping like sanctions on these as fast as possible now. I, I mean, there's a couple Maybe. ways to think about this and that one... Uh, the people who have these head funds are the ones who have all the money and thus all the influence. So there's no way that they're gonna just gonna keep taking a bath every time a right. su every time su a group of internet yokels decide they want to stick it to the big guy. They're going to find some way to get rules implemented against it. Yep. yep. They got caught yep. off guard this time, and they probably won't allow themselves to be caught off guard again. Yeah. I'll, I mean, all they have to do is stop selling short. Yeah, but they fine. won't because that's how they make all their yeah, money. Yeah, that's how they make mm -hmm. money. They well, just want you to stop. They want to stop but, you from making money. They, yeah. want to, they want to ensure that they're still getting their their treats. No, I know how. Yeah, yeah. I got kicked out of a casino once, so. Why? I, went, I got to hear this many. story. What? Oh, I don't I don't want to share it too much, but I. He stole, I, their, I, he stole <laughs> their he stole their lunch meat. <laughs> I, I I I played I played a little well you know my I used my engineering degree for something ah and um you were counting cards well, I was not no no I was playing <laughs> with the bet side but uh, uh on a house game it was like roulette huh. and uh, they gave me a couple of warnings the dealer did and next thing I know I'm surrounded by it was India casino so swarm swarm yeah I was surrounded by some pretty big uh, big guys big guys and uh they asked me to leave and you, did you say can i can i cash much. out <laughs> you didn't no, argue with let, i don't even know if they let me cash out i don't well anyway but i was only winning it, it was just about when i was taking up a seat i wasn't even winning that much mm. i was winning i maybe won 
I was winning about uh, like twenty bucks an hour, thirty dollars an hour. Yeah, well, that's not bad. That's hardly anything. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but but um, but you weren't losing twenty, thirty bucks an hour. Well, right. I was, well, I wasn't losing two hundred every five minutes like the other people. Right? Yeah. Oh wow. And so they so, wanted you to give up their seats so they could get some high rollers in there to lose some big. That's how I analyze it afterwards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so well, this is I, I don't know. So I, I the fact that I'm not OK with uh, Wall Street being like a casino on that level where there are people that are going to win, period. And if you start to win, they remove your seat. Right. And that's exactly what um, Reddit's. Uh, is saying is like yeah and that's exactly why what they cried out about when robin hood suspended trading mm -hmm. that but now we the see guy now we see why they suspended trading though and i understand that they had to they didn't have a choice at that point no they might not have financially had a choice but yeah yeah but, but, the, I, but uh, you think... know you know that loophole is going to be fixed oh sure. is no, that I legal mean, though i mean even if they how... don't have the money they should have the if you're going to play the game, you should have the money to play the game. If they close because they didn't have enough money, is that legal? Can they literally deny their customers you, you access? You can't buy the stock that you don't have the money for, which is right. basically what they do. Well, but that's what selling short is. This could have happened, um, technically could have happened with one share. So well, do one, one share of stock short, and then the, the value of that share goes up a billion percent. The Redditors are suing Robin Hood. Do you think they have a case? Yeah, I mean, right. they've got the money now. No. Yeah, but oh, no. Yeah. And can they make they a case that, that Red, but Robin Hood, by closing out their trading, denied them access to potentially uh, windfall profits by by shutting them down? I mean, they might have a case. Depending well, if they on win, the... if they win, Robin Hood will just declare bankruptcy. The guys that started it will leave and start Little John. And that'll be the next day. <laughs> and then they'll have terms Fire of talk. service for that. <laughs> right. How long have you been tucked, had that little piece of wisdom I just, tucked I away? I just came up with that just now. I'm thinking. And, uh, and you look proud of yourself. And when you, you guys were talking about it's them good. being sued, I'm like, yeah, well, they'll just, they'll just leave and start another company along the similar vein. I mean, you know, this is how capitalism works. Right. The rich get richer and the poor don't. I was going to say it's the system. If, if the <laughs> if the poor start making the money, then they'll start changing the rules. Well, I mean, this is about as accurate to Robin Hood's name as the app has ever gotten. I think. Right. Right. They literally <laughs> stole from the rich, or at least prevent. Yeah, they stole from the rich and gave to everyone else. <laughs> well, speaking of stealing from the rich. This, said, giving, th this segue had better make sense. Yeah. Speaking of stealing from the rich and giving to the poor, um, I thought it might be kind of fun to update our listeners on how our D&D uh, &D campaign is going. That was Although terrible. we haven't that really been... Terrible. That doesn't work at all. It, but at really least been... it, it wasn't perverted and nasty. So, okay. Or a yeah, really I mean, bad pun. Granted, so, we're, we haven't been stealing a lot. We've mostly... Our been listeners don't know all missions. the things we we're going to discuss today. And we're just not going to discuss some of the things. So we're happy to discuss D&D. &D. Let's do that. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Well, no, let's but not get there. If for some of the things, yeah. I agree good. with Seth. Let's not, let's not get there. Did we want to... Uh, so, Seth... Uh, we were going to talk about uh, Tasha's Cauldron. Yeah, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Uh, uh, the, relatively... in, in D and D, that is right. Yeah. Do so you uh, want to tell folks about that? Well, it's a fairly recent uh, addition to the D and D five E rule set. Uh, so it adds it along, kind of along similar veins to other uh, supplemental uh, books. John's got the Cauldron. Here. Yeah, got it right here. Hold that a little closer, John. Um, there you yep. go. Yeah, that's good. So, you know, there's the D&D &D 5e uh, Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition uh, core rule book that's got your core classes and the subclasses, spells and feats and items. And they've, as is kind of been tradition ever since this whole thing started they released new supplemental books and this is one of the most recent ones and one that we've included in our campaign so um uh why don't you uh 
tell us a little bit about how it's uh, changed your character, what your character can do now that you've got Tasha's enhancements. Uh, so I play a barbarian named Audrey, who is a lot of fun. Uh, but uh, so should, I had a talk in Audrey's voice for this one. I yeah. don't. I, 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 I'm not prepared for that. I, <laughs> it's like if I'm. You have to get in a game game You have to get in a character. Me, 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 me. I can't do it right now. <laughs> <sighs> it's like, I. Okay, just come. I'm trying to remember <laughs> how. No, nope, that's Scottish. Oh, you uh, went Scottish. You went <laughs> with the Scottish Agram. I like I it. Oh, uh, I, I didn't want I didn't want my dwarf to be Scottish, so he's got a rush a bad Russian accent as a bad close to a bad Scottish accent. So what? But so now, what? It, yeah. So what features do you have now that? So I chose the like we we were given permission by our uh, DM to. to uh, kind of update our characters with the new content. And so Agram went with the path of the beast. When, and now when I rage, I kind of shape shift like a lycanthrope and I get, I'm- What, what is raging? Uh, so barbarians rage. When they, when they rage, they like kind of, they, in they kill 5e, things. you take less damage from certain things. Uh, you deal more damage and you get a lot of other benefits. In Check my case this. now, I can I gain a bestial feature, claws, or a biting mouth, or I think my favorite is going to be the tail that gives me reach and can... bestial. 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 You yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. So, so John, how does your um, um, cat change? Well, my my tabaxi, yeah. which is a, a species in Dungeons and Dragons, uh, and as he's a bard, uh, and it's like bards. All right, for for listeners who used to play D and D long, long ago, and bards were basically cannon fodder. Bards are not cannon fodder anymore; they're actually quite uh, useful. Yeah, uh, depending on what subclass you get, and it's like. Um, I was yeah, I, and when I was setting up the bard, Seth helped me a great deal. Yeah, in terms of he 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 pushed me to get College of Swords, which was actually a very very good idea. Can you and give us like, a, an example of one of uh, um, Cope's uh, bard songs? Um, <laughs> I mean, we asked Agram to talk in you know Seth to talk as Agram, so I think it's only fair that we hear a song from Cope. I haven't. I haven't practiced either. I have not oh. got my <laughs> my throat. Otherwise, I do a few bars me, of uh, me, 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 and it's like a few bars of that famous song, "The Things Agrams Did to the Sheep Behind but the Barn." You have a. You oh, have hey, a, like that, a, no, no, I, no. That is not fair. Agram has gotten luckier more often than you have. I think. Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Mr. And Black John, Leather. John, don't yeah. you have a harmonica now that you can... I do. I can't play it, but I have it. Let's see it. This is uh, Cope's uh, harmonica that he uses to sort of kick off his his uh, musical songs that either, uh, yeah, that uh, either inflict <laughs> terror or healing. Very nice. That's the extent of my harmonic <laughs> capabilities. Nice. All right. So, well, Bill, what, what have you? Yeah. So, uh, so my character, uh, I play a, a sorcerer. Uh, it's a dragonborn sorcerer, and um, <clears throat> with Tasha's cauldron enhancements now, I get the aberrant mind feature, uh, which means I can do uh, a tele telekinetic communication with uh, friends and foes. Um, and uh, different types of mind effects. Um, also get some additional uh, spells, which are pretty cool um, because the sorcerer um, has always been a little bit limited um, in the number of spells you can know um, as you go up per level that increases, but you don't get very many. But now with Tasha's Cauldron, you get about, I don't know, I think it's five or six different spells now that you just automatically know and they don't count against your previous totals. So that kind of gives you a lot more flexibility. You don't have any additional spell slots for casting, but 
you have more spells from which to choose that may fit a wider range of um, adventures that you find yourself in or, or uh, um, you know, disasters where you need to pull something out of your hat real quick and you can look and you've got a, a bigger variety of spells. And then um, Linda, um, so yours, your character changed a little bit and previously uh, Linda's character is a ranger by the name of Raina uh, forest wind. Um, yeah. And it, uh, it's kind of nice. Actually it changed a lot because, uh, she used to have, I mean, as a half elf ranger, there's not a whole lot of spells a ranger gets because they're, they range fighters. They're not spell casters. So, uh, with Tasha's book, uh, it introduced uh, a change in the character. You could can become an archetype of a fey wanderer. So it taps into the fey background and it actually gives you a lot more spells you can cast, which is for me brand new. And I actually love it because uh, it's it gives you uh, the opportunity to not only range attack, but also, you know, carry some some spells up your sleeve that you can pull out. So I really like the changes. Well, and uh, one other interesting feature for you. So previously... Um, your character had, um, uh, what was it, a companion uh, animal? Right, um, which of course <laughs> didn't make it. For... <laughs> so only, off. Off. only made it through a few campaigns before it uh, died. That was, your, uh, that was your panther. What was your panther's name? Nero. Nero. He was a black And panther. unfortunately he got, uh, what was it? Was it zombies that got him? Uh, no, crap. Oh, yeah, it was that hideous, crap, yeah. horrible trap we had to get through. So right, so he's which gone. But through, now, which was very traumatic for Raina because she's a <laughs> lover of animals, yeah. animals in the forest and all that kind of stuff. Well, now with your Fey Wanderer, um, you don't have to worry about killing off a companion animal. Now you get a familiar, which you can instantiate the familiar. And then it hangs out with you. And then it, at some point, if it ever reaches zero hit points, it just fades out. It doesn't right. really die. And all you have to do is just recast it and it and it can come back again. So, so that's kind of that's a nice, nice feature. Plus, you can also... No more horrible use a, deaths. <laughs> yeah, you can also use a, uh, a special word to send it into a sort of a, a parallel pocket dimension where it can just, you know, kind of hover hang around out. and stay out of the way and not get injured until you need it. So that that's kind of a cool well, feature for your character too. The, so Tasha's, I, I, I think the different supplements bring in different flavors of things. And so Tasha's brought back the flavor of, uh, brought back the flavor of the Feywild and uh -huh. Psionics. Right. So several classes got psionic ability or subclasses, and several got the fey touch subclasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it provides uh, some interesting uh, additional capabilities for our characters uh, going forward. And yeah. uh, so right now, where we're at in the game, we're kind of at this uh, city, um, this sort of forgotten city surrounded by these. Uh, Yanti that are like uh, humanoid snake creatures. Snake people. Snake people. And uh, we're looking for the guy that's uh, running. Uh, I guess he's like friends with them because he's living in their their temple. Uh, but his name is Rosnisi and he's a former paladin that now is in charge of an army of the undead. So we're going to go try to meet with him. Hopefully he won't kill us. And uh, maybe he'll even sign up uh, to help us. Uh, because I wouldn't we're, hold my breath. Yeah, because we're uh, our other option. The other thing we're trying to do is try to uh, stop a couple of liches from uh, destroying the entire universe. So um, Yeah, we're in between a rock and a whole lich of a situation right now. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. The game's turning into a real lich. Yeah, we we are what sixth level right now. We just hit sixth level the other week. Yeah, and we are attempting to survive a lich. So <laughs> anyone who's <laughs> familiar with <laughs> gameplay knows we're not ready to fight a lich. No, or two. But on the on a positive note, we can run fast. <laughs> 
Well, probably and not we do fast, run good. Not as fast as uh, John's uh, tobacco. Yeah. I just have to outrun you guys. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, we're kind of yeah. caught between two liches, so be careful. Don't run too far out ahead. You might run into the other lich. We have we have 99 problems, and a lich is two of them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Actually, yeah, so I think the other 97 problems are the problems that the liches gave to us, too. <laughs> so That's so, true. Well, yeah. But when you're given a mission by a lich, you don't really say no and live. So you just do what you have to do and then try to find a way out. See, we have a sponsor. What's Salvatore? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Why super, did he send us anyway? Wizard. I mean, we, he sent us to, to kill some witches that were that were spreading uh, evil uh, pies. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think evil baked I goods. Yeah, I, did he? I don't think he sent us to take care yeah, of him. I did. think we just decided to do that because no, Dim, he did. Dim, uh, remember us? our yeah. our contact met us and gave me one of the pies. Oh, and I got addicted to. Uh, Andrum got addicted to the pies, <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, so these are why the pies are dangerous. Uh, don't let the dwarf eat any more pies." <laughs> and so yeah, so remember we had to walk from the, yeah. there to our place, and I kept having to. Use minor illusion to turn all the pie stands into outhouses so that Auburn <laughs> wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't go. So we'd yeah. walk right by them. Yeah. Right. Right. But I mean, it's like we, we failed at, <laughs> at killing the witches. And then he sent us after two liches. It's like, but it's at like the, we at survived. The time, like you did three. not survive. No, you actually, I, did technically not. I did because you guys basically pestered the witches until they, they were like, fine, God, we'll bring them back. Leave us alone. Yes, we did. <laughs> we did pester them, but it's and we like, did agree to leave them alone. We sort of we sort of made a a signed agreement that we just uh, didn't say for how long. Yeah, if we, we don't bring Agram back. So anyway, I mean, but then we got technically Agram never agreed to anything. I was dead at the time, <laughs> right? And then well, and then we like, got sent on a flying uh, sailing ship to a different continent where we are now. Schultz battling liches so yeah. it's awesome yeah well, it's fun Epic. come back so you know Agram's pet dinosaur died so. yeah. hello my pet panther died yeah mm -hmm. but Here, here's a I question just got bone crusher we were still bonding <laughs> <laughs> well now here's a question if uh, in the course of the campaign your character would die and say it's uh, permanent death you don't get resurrected like agram did um what would be your next character if you were to roll a new character and come back into the game as somebody new wow what would you want to be would you still be a fighter would you change your class would you change your race well i mean you always have you have to consider party composition yeah but i think if i were to if I, if Agram were to bite the big one, and yeah. let's be honest, he's probably more likely to bite the big one than any of you guys. Because he yeah. does go first. <laughs> he, he, he He's not a ranged guy. He's got to get up in their faces. Right. Uh, but if I were to go out, I might try something that was also added in Tasha's. I mean, technically, this was added in Eberron. But uh, or their Eberron expansion, but Tasha's brought this in as a uh, core class that can be anywhere. Uh, the Artificer. Ah. Mm -hmm. And what does that do? So the Artificer is all about making magical items. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have the ability to uh, basically make themselves magical items, uh, and sometimes they can distribute them. Sometimes the magic items are just for them. But they're basically the mad science tinkerers of Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. So I would be very tempted to play a uh, artificer of some variety. You can make uh, like their subclasses are can go from healer, a, a healer type who makes healing potions and can distribute those to the party to a uh, kind of a fighter hybrid where you make yourself a steel defender 
basically an automaton that helps you in combat. Like that robot chicken that uh, Linda just put up. Robot chicken. Yeah. Uh, so I think that would be a very interesting class to play. Yeah. What about you, Bill? Um, I think um, so. Uh, Lynn and I played a, a short game with a friend of ours, uh, Katie Otten, who's actually been on the show in the past. And um, <clears throat> in that game, I played um, a paladin that was uh, an Azimir. Um, Asimar. Asimar. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Asimar. And uh, so I think uh, I would try to bring that character in if I had if I had a choice. I kind of kind of liked him. He was kind of a, a fighter, but uh, he had a little bit of um, um, uh, spell ability. Um, I haven't really looked to see what additional options he might get in Tasha, so I might have to research that. But that's kind of what I'm thinking. How about you, John? I don't know. It's like this bard is turning out to be very versatile and useful. But if I if I had to, I would. I think a wizard. Yeah. I don't know why you went with a sorcerer. A sorcerer, sorcerer. No, sorcerer. Sorcerer. Uh, okay. A sorcier. <laughs> the uh, the sorcerer seems like a poor man's wizard. It doesn't seem to do a whole bunch. It's like no. Yeah. All the, all the best spells are wizard spells. If you look them up, the ones that really kick ass. So well, I've been a wizard in the past. The thing I didn't like about it is that you have to. You have to keep all your book of spells with you. If you lose your book mm -hmm. of spells, you can't. You don't have a memory for spells. Whereas, sorcerers have sort of an innate ability to remember spells, so you don't have to have a book. You well, just you memorize them and you know them and you can cast them at any point. And having been in a prison and only diapers, we uh, we appreciate not having to have to carry a book everywhere. Yeah, well, you, so... yeah, but you you didn't get to use your spells anyway, so no. Well, the, the difference is like the wizard is very flexible. He knows a ton of spells, but he I think he gets less spell slots per day. Oh. Oh. The sorcerer doesn't get as many spells. They're much more focused on damage dealing rather than being mm -hmm. the multi-tool that a wizard is. Then maybe I'd stick with Bard. Because after 10th level, I can take any two spells. In fact, I automatically get any two spells from any class I want. Nice. So every every level, well, not every level, every all right, three times during the uh, level up process up to level 17, I guess, I get two two spells from any class. Nice. And it's like, yeah, Pretty there's some, and I've already kind of picked out some of them. It's like... Hey. They have done a really good job of making the bard a very yeah. playable class. It used to be a joke. I mean, I mean, I remember those days. It's like I mean, the bards are still a joke. Like, well, no, jo not they, well, the, they are. The, they have jesters. the old they're, bard jokes still associated with them. Yeah, sleeping they do, around, but... seducing the enemies. Uh, well, I was watching a, a show from like the the nineties. And it's like uh, on, I think it was on Amazon Prime. I can't remember what it's called. And they, they it was a D and D show where, like, they, you know, they did like uh, a show with people playing their characters. Um, and the bard died, and and the whole rest of the crew turned to the the person who killed the bard and said, "Do you think killing the bard impresses us?" And it's like that's the truth. It's like, yeah, bards used to be. Yeah, it's like you killed the bard. Way to go. They were like oh, yeah, when I they were for some reason when I think of a bard, all I ever think of is the uh the bards that were following around um Sir Robin in Monty yeah. Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> Those are my favorite bards. They were hilarious. But Linda, what about you if you had a different uh character? Well, I was thinking uh I would change to sorcerer only because I wanted to be able to work with spells a lot more. Uh -huh. uh, but now that uh, Tasha has come along, I'm actually able to use a lot of spell casting with my ranger, and I you do like the, I do like the you ranger. You went to Tasha's, and all of a sudden you're like you're like Vegas. You just spread a whole <laughs> of, Viva Las of, Vegas of, of cards. It's like you've got a whole stack of spell cards now. Yeah. So I think I might, if I had to do it again, I think I'd write, just come back as a ranger again. Uh, yeah. yeah right. The well, Tasha's has brought in a lot of interesting. Like I have. I'm tempted to try a warlock, but we're kind of heavy on spellcasters. Yeah. Aren't warlocks uh, inherently evil? No. 
you can uh, you just have a patron, and your patron can be good neutral or, or sometimes good. There are a lot of different patrons you can have that you get your power from. I might like to try a necromancer because oh, yeah. in, in combat, necromancers, when they're sufficient, when they can raise enough dead, can fight like whole armies. Huh. It's like, it's like, like the five goblins we ran into that we, we destroyed with shatter could just yeah. have risen five skeletons and, and fought them that way. Us? Yeah. That would have been sweet. Nobody yeah. wants to be a rogue. I was going to say that I would like to try a rogue. That's another class I want to try in D&D. Because uh, they have a lot of fun subclass options, including something from Tasha's called the Soul Knife. Ooh. Ron. Ooh. That's, the, uh, that's the psychic influence coming in where they you can like as your as a soul knife you can make these psychic daggers that you can stab people with for psychic damage or even throw them and then reconstitute them nice good rogue it's like man it's like it's like bards are almost i mean especially if you make it a tabaxi bard they they get a lot of the the stealth and uh uh persuasion that you get from rogues so, and I taught mine how to pick locks. So, you know, like I, as as a system, I really like D and D five e. Yeah, yeah, I do too. It, well, it, and and you know, playing it on uh, fantasy grounds has really been in this pandemic, uh, sort of a lifesaver, I think, because it it automates so much of the gameplay, especially when you can't be there in person, rolling dice and. You know, well, um, we all have we all have dice cams though, and that's yeah, one thing I miss I is is I miss I miss having the dice. I miss rolling my dice. I do. I'm not gonna lie, but it's like I understand how this all works, and it's well, nice to have to, uh, the machine actually tally up all the stuff. Yeah. yeah. E- even after we are done quarantining, I think uh, Fantasy Grounds is going to remain part of my uh, gameplay. Yeah. Uh, for for this campaign and for the one I'm running for Pathfinder, just because as a DM, it uh, it manages so much of the information for yeah. me that oh, is yeah. really handy to know. Yeah. It's like okay, uh, I can see that. H- how many hit points does this one character have? I don't have their character sheet on me, so I can just look it up now. What's their save? I can look that up. Uh, yeah, but playing in person will make house ruling stuff easier again. Yeah. Well, and you've got uh, a game table coming, right? Yes. So I've got you ordered your game table from is it Wormwood? Wormwood Games. Okay. And I got in on their low cost uh, gaming table Kickstarter uh, last, I don't remember when that was last year, like September or something. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Seems but like yeah, I'm back. getting an eight person gaming table with accessories and it's going to be so nice. I can't when, wait. When are you supposed to be getting it? Uh, sometime in the next couple months. Right. De- definitely not February. Uh, low chance of March, higher chance of April. Okay, cool. Right now, their production is held up because the felt they ordered is held up in customs. Oh, wow. Felt is held up in customs? Yeah, they ordered felt from China, and it's yeah. held. You oh. can thank, you can thank a backlog uh... of stuff. Is, it, is that part of the tariff stuff that no, it's is being worked related. through? Um, yeah, those those felt related COVID vectors are just. Oh, literally... see that the image that just got shared that prophecy gaming table. Yeah. Oh man, I want that so bad. That's a so that is a beautiful table. It's got a crank system that lets you raise the felted surface up to the like flush with everything. Wow. And then that, you can that lower is it the, down a hmm? you can lower it down then and then cover the table with regular surface so that you can yep. use it as a dining table as well. And yeah, and keep your game kind of on pause or whatever. Huh. Wow. 
That, however, is a $10,000 table. Oh, my Lord. I mean, you can do it for maybe $4,000. doesn't but, even have a cup five, holder. Where's the just... cup holders for $10,000? Uh, the They're cup extra. holders are still extra. But it's got Jesus. a magnetic rail. Like, my table, too. Like, all their tables have a magnetic rail around the outside and on the inside. So you can have component organizers that you can snap in on the inside and keep your like little game bits in or cup holders that go on the outside. Yeah, I, you can see them right there along the edge of the table. Now, I like they, I, I they, like the idea of game bits. That's Do they have any gaming tables that have like uh the so um our DM Benito has kind of uh modified his gaming table where he's got like a big, you know, I don't know what it is, maybe a 55 or 60 inch a monitor as the gaming surface so that he can pull up digital maps and put them on there. Do they do anything like that? Yeah, they do. They introduced a in the last Kickstarter, the one for the table, they introduced that uh, feature for the tables in that you could have an insert and insert a table into or a TV into it that's like the same wood as your table. Oh. It's expensive though. Sure. Has anybody ever played D and D for money? For money? Well, I just figure at ten thousand dollars a table. That's kind of that's Vegas. Uh, Vegas uh, money. Money, yeah. That's like uh, let's get a good poker game going at five thousand. Uh, I mean, seat. I don't know. I, you'd almost have to have like. Uh, I don't know how you do it. I just yeah. Was, you'd almost have to have like two groups of adventurers fighting each other, and then. You know, it'd all be sort of a dice-based thing, and then they'd be wagering on who would be more able to uh, survive the encounter, I guess. I don't know how you would do it, necessarily. So, d, d, d as a spectator team sport? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're kind of close with all the live play uh, stuff that's that's happening. Right. Uh, uh, Benito with Go RPGs does some live play stuff at cons, right. and usually that that's okay. never competitive. Really, I'm not well, familiar well, with anyone who does it competitively. Will Wheaton that's does a quite a cost n- table, and a number of others do. They have like you know, they they do shows on playing D and D, but you probably have to heavily edit those because it's like there's just long stretches that you don't want to watch people right. just you know. Even for a low cost table, that do. even for a low cost table, that's a beautiful table. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be gorgeous. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, we got the espresso maple. It's a stained Ooh. maple. It's gonna be so that's, nice. Uh, we got the express uh, uh, espresso for our uh, deck color. It's espresso. Oh wow! And so part part of why this table is. Uh, considered low cost is because it's uh, modular so you can you can take the table apart and put it back together again Hmm. so in theory i could take it apart and bring it over in theory right in practice it might be a different story in practice it would be a huge pain in the butt i'm guessing (sighs) about an hour to tear down in an hour to set up at least well plus not only that but then you've got the risk of you know you're transporting it set it somewhere and setting it up and you're risking scratching it or damaging it in some other mm-hmm. fashion. that's and a beautiful i wouldn't want to do that. that kind of money for it you just want to kind of set it up in your your game studio right and, but i i'm sure there will be people who do get an extra one of these tables to bring around with them to other places like to cons Oh, oh yeah. my god! <laughs> oh yeah! Well, yeah. yeah. Like I, I could definitely see somebody setting one of these up at a con. Yeah. For their live play podcast. Well, exactly, or, especially or, one that they make money from. You know, if they got a large. Oh yeah, uh, I could audience, see the yeah. crew going there and setting up some of their tables just for, a, just so people could see them, and then, you know, asking people to come play on them. They do because. He I'm did. still thinking about Charles's idea of gambling on D and D. It's like. Well, how about how about like full contact D&D? Like, <laughs> like, that's like called LARP. LARP. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, LARPing. I was thinking more like if, if you, you try to roll your saves, and if you fail your save, 
Um, you take damage, and somebody comes out with a wiffle bat and just starts hitting you. <laughs> that's, that's LARPing. Yeah. But, but LARPing while seated. It's like, you don't get to fight back. <laughs> you do not. Well, that's not fair. Well, you lost your save. That's your, <laughs> that's, that's your fault. Should have rolled the dice better. Right. Now, so Seth, Seth, did you look at other gaming tables before you went with Wormwood, and what made you decide on them over other manufacturers? So, well, for one, I've got I've got a few Wormwood things. I've got my dice tray. I can go get that in a second. Okay. Uh, I've got a dice tray. I've got one of their dice vaults. They've just got they've got really good quality. So you're impressed with the quality, and that was mm -hmm. kind of the driving. Second, they have a web series called Worm Life that I watch and I'm kind of a fan of. Yeah, I've got the that Power. dice system that you sh that's up on the screen right now. I I've mean, got... those are just beautiful. They're like works of art. I know. Yeah. <laughs> They're magnetic. It's so cool. Uh, so I, I just like Wormwood as a company. Uh, but the low cost the game table the low cost game table was is pretty much the best bang for the buck i could find because mm. i've wanted a gaming table for a long time katie yeah. will tell you that i probably am semi was semi annoying about it and probably haven't gotten better since i've got one we have one coming so. yeah well and and <laughs> but the, and the uh the thing that i think is very cool too is that uh You've got a 3D printer and actually a, a larger one coming where you've been able to print a lot of your own miniatures for uh, for D and D for gaming. Um, so and you're and you're doing a great job on painting some of those. It's been amazing just to see some of your uh, some of the uh, figures that you've painted, um, just really detailed. So yeah, that should be a, a pretty neat system when you get it all put together. Yeah, so my games will have once I get the table and I get the new 3D printer and we're playing in person again. That's a lot of things and a lot of time, but I'll be able to print out terrain features to like place on the board to kind nice. of liven up the scene. Yeah, very cool. It's a lot of fun. What you explain this real quick for people that might not be way into D D what larping is larping is live action role play and so it's basically taking your game from the board out to a park or a field or a weekend camping where you take on, where you yourself take on the role of the character you dress up you get uh, these things called buffer weapons and so any sort of combat will be with the weapons actually fighting or if you're casting spells you've got little nerf balls that you throw at people right and there are game masters and moderators who will keep <laughs> track of the rules i've never done but people like it huh yeah i imagine that uh i mean you know playing D D, just sitting at a table with all the books and the dice and all this shit that you that you buy um, is uh, not really cheap, and I can imagine how much more expensive it would be if you're doing live action role play where you, you know, you're building the costumes and buying the weapons and the shields and all. Well, that. you do. You you actually do that. You just don't hit anybody with them, Bill. That's <laughs> it's like you're already do. buying all the stuff. Yeah, that's true. We do that with um, with our steampunk stuff and Doctor Who and. Well, you know, like Jedi Star stuff, Wars. Cons. Yeah. Your your Jedi your yeah, it's your your yeah. you have combat ready lightsabers and True. you do you have one of the, you have a very high end Jedi outfit. So it's like you've already you're there. You're a LARPer. Yeah, you just haven't <laughs> hit anybody yet. Right. <laughs> it's like he hasn't played a game yet. Right. I, haven't I been mean, in... you could argue like I've heard you guys talking about uh, some of the stuff you do with the steampunk society uh uh, where you will, they'll have a big game where you're, uh, wasn't it le year before last uh, November where there was some sort of thing where you were closing portals around Lincoln or something? Omaha. Oh, Omaha. The, Omaha, yeah. 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 Right. 
That's right. kind of what uh, what what I'm talking about. Is someone will set up the scenario, and yeah. there will be groups going through who play <laughs> it, and there will be the people who organize it who are playing the NPCs or the or whatnot. Yeah, yeah, we had uh, yeah, it was pretty elaborate because we even had like. Um, you know, those, I can't think of what they're called now. It's, it's a, like a cylinder that's got um, spinnable discs Puzzle box. on it. Yeah. Just, oh, those were awesome. Yeah, you had to use the, yeah. One figure out the, uh, the the clues to get the combination to open it I'm up. I'm right. You could pull out a, a spell that you could use to close the, the hell mouth yeah. portal to hell that we had so yeah it was fun it was uh that was our annual halloween uh, uh gotta close yeah. that yeah yeah that's fun stuff yeah i just i but i i think you know i was there bill was there can you imagine those people actually larping it would be uh, the, that's what i'm saying is like no 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 you you, you have to see the people <laughs> it's like i i i don't think yeah, it, it's it's just a visual that you 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 have to be there to you know to be a part of student punk society to to get that visual. But yeah, yeah. Well, and a lot of them have uh, pretty expensive costumes, you know. Yeah, and they don't. And they're not, yeah, you're not going to want to mess those up. But right, right. Or if it, you've it's... got a costume with demon wings, you're not going to want to get those busted up. It, it, to, so to simplify it down, LARPing is probably the crossover of cosplay and D&D. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's actually real serious LARPers, too. Oh, of course. Like the guys who run around sewers. And, run around and, sewers? Yeah. Who? Uh, something that the, I, I know I've read stories about the Los <laughs> Angeles uh, LARPers. They like to hit the L.A. sewers. And, and and conduct LARP sessions. Seems to me, seems to me like those guys would be perfect candidates for that new um, anal swab COVID test. <laughs> and there it is. Yes. <laughs> well, so God, uh, what the hell it, are you talking Bill. about? <laughs> well, so this was announced. This no, was no, 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 no. Bill, you heard about it because that guy talked you into it. It's in that van down by the you, river that you don't want to talk not, about anymore. Charles, we are not rewarding you with talking no? about this story. Charles posted the link. We right, are not rewarding. He seems so nice. Charles but then, posted the link. Then the swab came out. Let's, How did you? Yeah, let's, it, let's use that in air quotes. Swab, Bill. How was the swab? Yeah, no, no. Someone else, someone else mentioned it to me, but it's, it's on the, the link I posted was from WebMD. But uh, I just I just thought it was interesting that nobody, you know, we have these pandemic films, you know, like, and you were you were mentioning there's gonna be a film coming out that's Pink Cloud or, or whatnot. Yeah, the Pink Cloud. But no one, I don't think anyone has ever captured the um, the brown cloud. Well, it's not just that. <laughs> but it, so one of the things they were gonna do, so they, so China's developed this anal swab uh, COVID oh. test. Um. Which I don't know if it's any more less comfortable than the, the nasal swab that I had the other day. I want to no. say yes. Uh, well, yeah. All right. In well, I guess case, it depends what you're into there, but uh, <laughs> I, no. someone's doing something wrong. I think. But uh, but one of the things they were going to use it for was uh, international flights. You know, along. Seth flight. is not impressed. Yeah. I can see. But, Seth's but I, face I can just see like impressed. TSA. No one. No one's. No one's. You know. Take your shoes off, put them on the rack, and you know, and your laptop, and please lay down, ass in the yeah, air. Yeah, your belt buckle, yeah, and they'll. And then they put you. They put you through the thing. Please, please try to touch your toes. Mm, yep. Sign no. this. Sign, sign this you consent know, form. Well, sign yeah. it, please touch your toes. Yeah. Yeah. But Bill well, here's said, the thing. The advantage of it is that you get um, a lot more a positive test of someone still having a viral load with COVID than viral you load. nasal swab. Well done. <laughs> I, I gotta give you, I'm gonna give you a golf clap on that one. So <laughs> what you're saying then is if you swab me, I may not have virus, not, but if you swab me, I may have virus. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so yeah. nasally you could come back with a negative test <clears throat> and be allowed to travel. 
Whereas if they did the anal swab, you would still yeah. show as having a high viral load and not be allowed to travel there. Oh, okay. You, okay. You, okay. But if it's not in my nose, I'm not spreading it. It's not like I'm coming Are you out doing the that on end. purpose? It's like, really? So well, just, all right, <laughs> fine. Do you have to buy people like dinner and a movie before you can, like, <laughs> no. like get the anal movie. swab or what? You it's get like the dinner and the movie. Well, what if you're, what if you're farting? Is that similar to coughing? No. Well, actually, oh, because you have two layers of fabric or one, depending so, on if you're so, commando or not. So underwear <laughs> and pants are literally a double mask is what you're yes. saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. <clears throat> so is there N95 underwear? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Seth is very, very unhappy right now. <laughs> I think Seth wants N95 underpants. He specifically yeah, yeah. did ask yeah. us not to talk about this. Yeah. And speaking of my asthma, yeah. <laughs> my asthma? Well, oh, the toxic no, cloud. I am most upset that you said that it would, if the story came up, it would have to be introduced organically. And you did <laughs> not you reach. What? What? Right. So. Anal far. stuff is organic. No, it wasn't. No, you anal just stuff is point organic. Where you had to it's talk about it. Nature. It's used he to had to bring it up separate, special. It seemed like a perfect segue into talking about this important issue. Well, I wonder, I wonder, okay. Is. Speaking about segues about to important issues, have you guys seen the Jurassic Park trailer that's redone with all Pee Wee Hermans? Oh, good Lord, what? no. I have seen that. I And I, I must say, I like that. Some, like, someone remade the Jurassic Park trailer with all the dinosaurs replaced with Pee Wee Herman. Oh, You're my kidding God. Me. Why? Because it's <laughs> silly and funny. Is it, where okay. is it? Like on YouTube? Yeah. Oh. I will have to check that out. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Seth, is, Seth apologizes for getting in the way of your uh, anal-based entertainment. But no, I think in 90 I apologize for nothing. For nothing. You did. What's that, Say Charles? what, Charles? I'm, I'm all for the N95 underwear, just in general. Just in general purpose, outside yeah. of COVID even. Well, yeah, why not? I want, I'm getting a picture in my mind of what that would look like. And I well, don't you like know, it. here's the thing, though, and <laughs> Linda made this point the other day, is that the N95 mask doesn't necessarily protect other people. It protects you because it allows your exhalations to get out of the mask just fine. But it fil stops down and filters stuff. And you think it's not too way? I don't know if it is or not. Yeah, I don't think. Okay, the N95... so it depends on your 95 and 95 mask. There are those that have the little valve in them. Yeah, and those valves make it worthless. The, exactly. It makes it worthless for oh. other people. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, so I when you inhale, the, the valve, valve stops that. down and filters. But when you exhale, well, exhale, valve, that's right. So they do make N95s mm -hmm. that do not have the valve, and those are the ones they suggest we wear. So maybe for the underwear, you just get the valve reversed so that it filters <laughs> on the outbound and allows anything back in. I don't want valves. In my I don't underwear. want. I don't want valves either on my <laughs> on my underwear. You I, don't? I, no. no, I don't. I don't. I don't want any valves or ports or anything. <laughs> ports? <laughs> my underwear. I don't. Nothing. Not even well, an exhaust. You, you have no. You yeah, have no. No there. exhaust. No muffler. Your underpants no. have like a fly, right? Huh? My uh, underwear? Not always. Has like okay, a, we're not going to talk about this anymore. A fly. Yeah, this, does, this isn't sci-fi in any oh. sci-fi or fantasy in any respect. You just well, want to talk be about fantasy. butt stuff. It could be fantasy. Well, it's apocalyptic. Will, will underwear change in the future? I just made it sci-fi. Oh, for oh God's God. sake. You're supporting him now. I, well, you're right. I feel bad now. Shut you're, up, Bill. You are enabling. You're Shut an enabler. Shut up, Bill. Shut He's up. always been an enabler. No, you've John always been a denier. Little, John loves these little side trips down the dirt road to who oh, knows. Oh no, 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 what? No dirt road. No. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's like a, it's not on the main highway. He's off on this. Oh, okay. I me me dirt road you're, to you're wherever. The, you're the one that drug us through the sewers, so, man. So tell me about Pink Cloud. What's up with that? Uh... Oh, yeah. So Pink Cloud is a uh, movie that was uh, written in 2017. Uh, you realize no, what you just did for Bill was like uh, rumpling up a, an aluminum foil ball 
and throwing yeah. it so you distracted him. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, that's so, our secret. We want to talk about this. So this is a, a film that's um, out at the uh, Sundance Film Festival uh, right now. It was uh, written in 2017, filmed in 2019, well before the COVID pandemic. And it deals with a, a pink cloud um, that is highly toxic. And if you're exposed to it, um, you die within a matter of seconds. So basically it, it ends up spanning the entire globe. So the entire world is in a lockdown situation. And this particular story um, is from the perspective of a, a woman who um, she goes out on a first date, ends up bringing the guy home uh, that night. And then when they wake up the next morning, these air raid siren sounds and everybody goes into lockdown and it's the kind of lockdown that actually lasts for years and um, it turns out that this guy she brought home um, he uh, uh, has this idea of a, the nuclear family where he wants to have uh, a wife he wants to get married and he wants to have children but she was not of that same mindset she didn't want children she didn't want marriage and um, so the, they both find themselves trapped together in her apartment and, because you can't leave because you can die in seconds if you step out. So they're trapped there literally for years. And she ends up, you know, because of his constant pressure, she ends up relenting and, and having kids. And uh, it's all about um, how that dynamic plays out over the course of the story. So it sounds like an interesting film to watch. I'll have to see, uh, hopefully it'll... Uh, make it to Netflix or something uh, in the near future. Uh, it was uh, filmed in Brazil, so it's uh, got subtitles, uh, but it looks really interesting from the trailer. That's, that's kind of funny because Brazil just had a really wicked strain of COVID pop up. Yeah, right. So yeah, I mean, really wicked, but it's also, I hope that this movie uh, uh, reconciles your feelings about miasma based movies because you're still you're still reeling from Barbarella, I, I think. Am. I think you still have a little PTSD. The Atmos was a roiling miasma of evil. And so every time I hear the word miasma, um, I, I think of Barbarella and it, it scares me. I well this this I don't know that this is gonna help you, but it's like every I'm time just... I think of Barbarella, I think of the opening scene. <laughs> With her <laughs> yeah, all, around naked all on the, a piece of plexiglass. All that shag carpet. Yeah. That's just I mean, I'm still impressed by it. Cause that's some like three, four inch shag. That was some that was you some, suppose that, you can still get space. shag carpet somewhere. It's it's I I I looked it up. You can't really. It's really? like I, I couldn't find any. I'm sure it's there, but it's not gonna be as common as it was in the 70s, <laughs> so it's probably gonna Cost. What do you want to do with it? Did you try you... just looking for carpet you could shag on? No, well, no, that's all sake. carpet. Wouldn't that be anything? <laughs> well, I don't know. Without rug burns? Guess it does strike me as... What do you, what do you want to do with shag carpet, Bill? Uh, oh, you, you could, can get it. We could film our own version of Barbarella. No. I don't, no. Mm, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, I don't. No. What well, we would call it? Bill Barella? I think it's like, you'll, just be, you'll be floating play, around. I think, John, you would make a good Dildano. Oh, no. I <laughs> have thought about making that cosplay. Uh huh. Knew you had. And I, the only thing that right stopped me there. is the fact that absolutely no one would know what it was except. Oh, come on. You did I the think a lot of people Connery. Would know. People outfit. know who, Zard who Zardoz is. They then know I think, who's I think Dildano but... would be right up your alley if you get my drift. You're just going for the low humor today, Bill. It's like, <laughs> I'm not proud of you. It's like, you can do better. I, you can. You can do better. All you have to do, it's one step at a time, Bill. One day at it's a time. It's the last can, day of January. I got to get it's in the my... the last my day of fun, January. So, fun, all, you know, that. once they come out with that sci-fi movie where there's the guy that is... The Charles, we can only see your ear. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> once they come out with that movie with uh, where there's the guy that's the... Um, anal swabber for a living no <laughs> yeah that's gonna, that's probably going to change cosplay forever who's going to no. play that role mr bean <laughs> <laughs> it's like, i don't know just saying like, <laughs> mr. what do you suppose that job would pay on an hourly rate 
billions. <laughs> have to be, who the hell have to be billions? Do that? Yeah. <laughs> Right, so like yeah, so it's this or flipping fries. That's Although, what I come to like. think of it, there are doctors that voluntarily go to school to be proctologists. Yeah, yeah but even so, the the doctors get the nurses to do the impacted bowels, and then the nurses get the the nursing assistants. And it's like no one wants to do that job. It's like, <laughs> right. So, any uh, true work involving the butt. You know, nobody wants so, a part of that yeah yeah no one wants no one, no one wants, wants any a of piece that. of that <laughs> Damn. okay then but the, the cloud struck me as being similar to the movie passengers from a few few years ago if you, you mean the one with jennifer lawrence i think so i think that's the one where they're stuck oh, in uh, the starship by themselves yeah 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 i can all right so but they got the whole they've got the whole ship to wander around in it's like yeah, but they, the the whole point is they miss people. So yeah, so now I can see yeah. your point. I can. Yeah. Well, they're both a little little rapey. Sounds like. Hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like actually, yeah. When passengers came out, uh, people criticized uh, Pritz, Chris Pratt's character for basically murdering because he 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 woke up someone from suspended animation that they couldn't put back. So yeah. essentially, she was he, he his machine malfunctioned his uh, hibernation sure. machine malfunctioned. Hers did not. He he woke her up and couldn't put her back under. So literally, he kind of killed her. He he took her out because she was supposed to wake up eighty years later on another yeah, planet. He killed a possible life. Yeah. Yeah. So well, what what would you do faced in that same situation where you're the sole living person on a giant spaceship, with, you know. An 80 year or it would be the life. greatest thing that ever happened to me. I would love it. <laughs> wouldn't you wouldn't you get wouldn't you feel starved for human companionship? No. You're a, yes, you you're would. an educator, so you're in front of people all the time. You're I'm forced people. to be in front of people. No, I, I, I like I like being in front of it, it's much easier to teach in front of people than not. Right. Teach in but, front wouldn't of people, you, but wouldn't you miss that human contact? They had a robot bartender. He was a very nice guy. Yeah, he'll do. That's he'll not do. the same as a human contact. What? I no. Mean, he's but, like that. He's like that guy on the Zoom video that's you know um, not wearing any pants. Uh, you know, he looks like a human from the waist up, but from the waist down, he's just like a metal frame. So I mean, I did, like, I've never. I don't think that's what Jeffrey Tubin looks like. But yeah, okay. I, I, yeah, I mean, he he was just. Uh, it was obvious he was a robot if you looked at him. So it's not like it's some person that you could take out to dinner or go dancing with because he's got no legs. He's just like on a servo. Yeah, yeah. But well, I don't want to take the bartender, the robot bartender, dancing. No, but you might want to do that with a human. I mean, that's. You well, know. they're both. They both. Both those movies strike me as bad options, right? One is being yeah, by yeah. yourself, right? And the and other, the other is being somebody. Cloud, it sounds like it's being with somebody really annoying. Yeah. And yeah. I, you know, I just think that in eighty years, I mean, it sure it, for the first, you know, two or three months, or maybe four or five months. Um, it might be fun running around a starship and having complete control. And that's assuming that whatever access card you had got, got you access to the yeah. whole ship. Which his did not, actually. Right. He, he, he couldn't eat you know, the good food. And right. It subsisted so, on I mean, oatmeal, so I guess. That's the thing. I mean, after four or five months of that, you'd be bored as hell and you'd want some companion at least to, you know, play D and D with, for example, or, you know, go eat and dinner and talk. Not only, not only that, but, you know, if there's maintenance activities that have to take place on the ship, it's better to do that with a partner or a buddy in case you get into trouble and you get injured. There he is. Yeah. So the from the, so he looks great from the tabletop on up. Yeah, but below that, he's just like a mechanical servo on a on a track that runs around the bar. So, you know, he's a great to interact with, but uh, in in the bar setting as a bartender, but it's not really somebody you could play D and D with, or you could go out to have a nice meal with, or you could sit in a observation deck and stare at the stars and you know, think about your future kind of a thing. So I think it would get very old. And I, I, 
I can't blame Chris Pratt's character for wanting a companion to spend that time with. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's horrible, but so was it wasn't his fault that his particular pod uh, malfunctioned, right? Jennifer Lawrence was the female yeah. actress, right? Yeah, but it, it's like you know, then I don't know. Would you do that? Would you literally kill somebody for your own companionship? Well, you're not really killing them. You're just you are. You're, you're removing them from whatever life they you're had. Changing. You're changing their their life plan. Is is that not just about the most arrogant thing you can do, though? So well, literally, literally take away someone's existence, the yeah. one that they were going to have, the one that they wanted. You're taking yeah. away the the life that they wanted and that they had envisioned for themselves. Yeah. and replacing it with something completely different than what they had expected out of your for your own selfish needs yes. yeah yeah i right. think i that, it's like um being uh, some pirate like, like like what the pirates did you know they yeah go to shore knock somebody over the head at the bar and next thing you know you're a, a sailor for the next year and a half charles we only see your ear again gosh darn it <laughs> my ear's talking <laughs> I was gonna say I'm waiting for it to go. Burr, 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 burr. Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's easy for us to sit here not having, not being in that situation. Oh, it would be tempting, but that's it's horrible. Not... We we wouldn't do it. In but all in honesty, I would, I would expect that the crew should have been easier to wake up. It's like yeah, probably. If it because it's like customer service if for nothing else. It's like right. Uh, it's like it's their job. You know, it's True. like. To deal with emergencies, and that would be an emergency. So, but yeah, he couldn't you, wake you them have up. To evaluate it, but I think at, at at some point, if you're alone for that period of time, eventually you're going to start going a little bit crazy. Um, oh yeah, so it's probably. It's not surprising that he would do something like that given that situation. So, oh, well, should it have been a horror movie then? Maybe. <laughs> or it's like in the in the end, they found a way to turn the auto dock into uh, um, another. Uh, hibernation chamber and, and and i think that's the point they had to do that to redeem uh chris pratt's character mm -hmm. uh, otherwise he's just he's just this monster who did that yeah so right but yeah how do we get on this i don't know but it's kind of fun <laughs> well i just thought it was similar to the the idea of the pink being stuck being yeah. stuck yep. with, with somebody he's almost the same as being stuck alone maybe but uh yeah which would you rather be, Charles? Stuck with somebody? It or depends. It costs. It depends on the. It See, would... And then Pink Cloud, it doesn't depend. It's like she literally got stuck with a guy that she yeah. met mm -hmm. the night before. And it's like, so she didn't get to even choose who she got stuck with. And it's like. But I think even as long as the person was not um, a raving psychopath. Well, he was, safe. though. He was a very he no he was a very abuse he look he was a sociopath he was yeah he, I don't think he was a sociopath he, he pushed was, his his particular the way he wanted things to go on her well he he maintained that that's what he wanted out of life and I think well, that that's tough then you know sometimes you don't get what you want with the, with the pressure even though she didn't agree with it necessarily but well, I don't then, it's not like he that's you know, called raped her you know, and dude her what do you think that is. Huh? What do you, if she <laughs> if he does something that she doesn't agree with, what do you think that is? No, I think and be very careful about what you say. I think she did agree with it eventually. I think I don't know. You know, maybe we should. No, see I've it. Been, yeah, I've watch the movie. Before. We'll maybe have to we watch the movie. It. From the yeah. trailer, what I got from the trailer was that he wanted to have a family. He wanted to have marriage and a children. She did not want that. But because yeah. they're trapped together for you know I don't know five or ten years. Uh, because we see her eventually have a child and we see that child having like a third or a fourth birthday. So they must've been together for quite a while. I think over <laughs> time, he just wore her down saying, you know, I really want to have children. And, and I think that, it, it, that, it, is that okay? Relented, but then she regretted it. Uh, That's what I, I got from the trailer. I, would, right, this, I don't this, know that it's okay, but it's also not rape. <laughs> right, right. Well, we have to see it. Yeah, I think we need to watch it and then uh, have a follow-up show and discuss it. So let's do. Well, that. I think uh, I think we're do at our time limit for today, so uh, we'll probably go ahead and wrap it here.
And uh, thanks all for watching. Uh, hope you check us out. Uh, again, our uh, address on the internet is galacticdriftwood.space. And from there, you can get to um, all the locations where you can watch and or listen to us, uh, our streaming content. So um, check us out. And do, we do you want to put up a link to where they can get their anal swab? Yeah. We'll no. It. Check it out. We'll put that on the sun. Stay safe. <laughs> yeah. Take care. We'll see y'all next time. Vaccines are coming. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Galactic Driftwood Podcast. For more information and past episodes, please visit our website at galacticdriftwood.space or subscribe to us on YouTube. And now, please deactivate your cranial downlinks, collect your towels, and be sure to watch your step as you exit our gravity well. <laughs>